Hey everybody, welcome to the Quantel Lindsay podcast. I'm your host, Quantel Lindsay, and this episode is brought to you by Blueprint for Life. There is no blueprint for life, but together we can create one. Listen, I have a special guest in studio today, a special guest who I'm excited to hear from, found out. I think he takes the word Vols fan to a whole nother level. And uh, I'm excited to hear about him, his family, his faith, his campaign, and all he does for District 24. So um, for those that tune in to the show, will y'all help me give a digital hand clap to the one, the only, Representative Kevin Raper. Did I pronounce that right, sir? You did. Very Good. good. Good deal. My wife says I'm terrible with names. Um, sir, I want to jump out here. How are you and who are you? Well, I am doing great. I, I Every one of my days evolve between good and great. So uh, so I'm just uh, I'm doing great. And uh, who am I? I'm uh, originally from Inglewood, Tennessee. I went to UT Knoxville and graduated uh, I've had two other degrees at Tuscan College. I got my master's. Uh, I got my EDS at Tennessee Tech. And uh, uh, I'm married uh, to Lori Bryant Raper, and she is a, a current teacher. Uh, and she's a math supervisor in Braddock County Schools, and she's in her 40th year. I'm wow. a retired teacher of 34 years. And uh, my, both of my parents were uh, retired teachers. And, um, and in addition to that, I've got two sons. Their names are Neelan and Manning. <laughs> and uh, they are being very successful. Uh, Neelan just actually changed jobs. He was director of football operations and assistant athletic director at Georgia, believe it or not, with that name. Oh, wow, but, yeah. Uh, he just went and he is a assistant uh, director of uh, the Big 12 Conference. Nice, nice. Well, sir, you you sound blessed, brother. It sounds. I, let me tell you, uh, the good Lord blesses me every single day. I I just I, I I've told many people. I said I really believe that I'm the most blessed person in all of Cleveland, Tennessee. Hey, man. Wow, brother. Hey, speak those things. Claim it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, good people. Listen, brother, so good uh, to have you on. I want to dive right in. 34 years of teaching education. Did you always want to be a teacher? It, not exactly. I went to, into college uh, at, with a business major, and I got to thinking about it and thought, I, I, as much as I enjoy being around people and, and students, uh, I believe I want to go in education. So I went in as a math teacher. I taught at Bradley High School for a number of years. I coached there. Uh, also, uh, I was principal at North Lee Elementary for six years. And then after that, uh, my last 17 years, I taught driver education at Walker Valley High School. Oh, wow. Walker Valley Mustangs in the building. Ah, shout out to the Mustangs. Listen, sir. So you education, you taught here, you're Tennessee through and through. That's what I'm finding out. You're your Rocky top. I mean, the, your boy's names, if you didn't catch it, his son's name, give it up. He's a Vols uh, fan or fanatic, should I say. And then you wake up and say, I have this beautiful life. I have these, I'm blessed. I'm in my community. I want to go into politics. You don't look like a glutton for pain. So to explain that one. Well, um, uh, there was a seat that was vacated on the county commission back in, oh, I'm going to say 2018. And uh, I had a number of people, a number of people approach me about it. And I, I gave a lot of thought to it and prayed about it. And my wife and I were good about it, so we I decided to run. I did win and served four years. Then uh, the uh, state house representatives, I've always thought that I might like to serve at the state level, but that position was vacated by Mark Hall. He ran for Senate, and when that opened, um, my wife came in and told me she'd just seen it uh, on Facebook, and I hadn't even heard about it. And so I began to have a number of calls about it. 
And my wife and I just spent time in prayer. Also, I called my mother. She, my dad uh, uh, died uh, three years ago, so she's on her own. Sorry and, and I'm an only child. So uh, we, uh, I got her blessing completely. And so we decided to do it. We won. And now we're in the re-election process. Re-election process. Uh, for one, if you're out there, early voting is still going on in Bradley County. Go let your voices, make your voices heard, cast your vote. And you have a man right here that is uh gunning for re-election i've seen you brother on the floor believe it or not i've seen you uh bring bills to the table i followed you um I, i'm impressed and i'm a fan and i'm 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 grateful for for what you bring not only to the community but to the state why um why for someone that doesn't know representative raper um why and i know you you why should they earn you give you the opportunity to earn their vote well i'm all about service I, I serve our people. Uh, it, a lot of people think that uh, they serve uh, the different legislators. That That is totally incorrect with me. Uh, I serve them. And uh, I like to, uh, any kind of problems that get to the state level that uh, they're having problems with, Social Security, um, um, uh, 10 care, uh, veteran benefits, I mean, uh, just numbers, uh, passports, uh, all kinds of things. I love to try to solve those for them. And a, a great deal of time uh, with the people that I can call and the departments I can call, we can get them solved pretty quickly. And um, and uh, I, I, just, I just relish it. Um, I, I carefully pick my bills uh, that I run. Uh, because uh, I listen to constituents and what's going on and things that impact our community. And uh, I try to uh, very best uh, represent in s several different ways. So uh, I I'm just a servant. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. That's dope. Um, that is a servant. That's one thing I love is you said that you serve the people. And I love that, that you said you listen to the constituents and I believe, um, I try to advise people, Representative Raper, to be hyper local. I know it's uh, it's so entertaining or um, depressing to look at the national and see what's going on on Pennsylvania Avenue. But I, I try to challenge young people and people in this community to um, pay attention more to, to your local community, your local representatives, because uh, if I'm being frank, I believe a bill you take up to the Capitol and get passed, it'll affect my address a lot quicker than it will coming from Washington. And, and, and so I like to pay attention and stay like hyper local in the community. And I love to bring guys on like yourself and women so people can get to know you guys, who you are and what you want to do, not only for this community, but for Tennessee. Now, what do you represent in District 24? For those that don't know, can you break that down? Kevin Raper is going to be reelected to represent District 24. What does that mean? Uh, are you talking about location or philosophy? Which, uh, which uh, location, sorry, sir, location. Okay, location, uh, I serve all of Cleveland, Tennessee, and okay. then it juts out into the county uh, a little ways all the way around, except for down in the McDonald, way out in the Prospect area. I go all the way to the uh, Hamilton County line. But wow. uh, Dan, Dan Howe serves the outer portion of Braddock County, and he and I have a joke that he is the donut and I'm the donut hole. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, that, um, for the for y'all that heard that, this is what he represents. This is the person, um, because a lot of people see these signs everywhere, but they don't know why. Why do I vote? So if you live in Cleveland, this is your voice. This is your fighter. His words. He wants to serve you and bring bills that can enrich the quality of living in this community. Did I? Did I? articulate that well right you, you did and I'll, I'll give you one example and a, a lot of people around the state of tennessee uh, criticized me for this because they said how's this going to impact the state of tennessee well truthfully it, it really didn't impacted uh, cleveland tennessee but last year 
Um, uh, we have to have a Senate partner anytime we run a bill. Senator Adam Lowe and I ran a bill that uh, made Cleveland, Tennessee, the hot slaw capital of Tennessee, and it has increased tourism dollars greatly, especially when they had the hot slaw festival in the first week yeah. of April. Yeah. And, uh, and in addition to that, I wasn't even trying to do this, but it's the first bill ever that, that, uh, a, that encountered a state food. And so uh, not only is Cleveland the hot sauce capital, but we're the first state food of Tennessee. Wow. Wow. Listen, um, we have Representative Kevin Raper on and he's telling us about the hot slaw capital. I know somebody out there just got hungry. Listen, you're here on the Quantel Lindsay podcast. I have Mayor Kevin Brooks on and he was talking about the hot slaw festival. Looked like you guys had a great time. And that brought in, like you said, uh, resources, financial resources for the community, correct? It did, and uh, it, it's funny that you mentioned Mayor Brooks. He just got through endorsing me, and uh, it's up on billboards and so on. We've advertised it. Uh, I actually saw him this morning uh, at a city council meeting. But uh, but anyway, I was so honored that because uh, he usually doesn't uh, go on the limb and endorse anyone, and I just took that as a real honor. Uh, for him to do that. But uh, absolutely, uh, that bill was to bring recognition to Cleveland, Tennessee, and then also uh, increase our tourism dollars, which it, it did. Mm, so we got Kevin Raper, representative running for re-election for District 24, endorsed by Mayor uh, Kevin Brooks. What other bills um, would you like to share? You want people to know that you have been a part of, whether you brought it to the floor, you endorsed uh, anything, uh, other bills you want to talk about before we transit uh, transition? Well, one especially is um, me being an educator around the state of Tennessee. There, uh, I hear of these horror stories where uh, students in school assault teachers and other employees, mm -hmm. and when they do, uh, the employees end up quitting. So we lose people from. Uh, the teaching profession, which already has a shortage of, because they're scared to go back. And so uh, we ran a bill, and it passed with ease. And it, there are huge penalties for any student that will assault a school employee. And now um, I think that uh, teachers will feel safer. They'll feel safer on their return. And then we also, within that, have got them uh, where they can get uh, some uh, mental and emotional help uh, with that and dealing with a, a, a situation like that. So uh, that is one, especially on my mind, uh, that uh, comes to mind. Uh, the last two years, we have had the, for a single year, we've had the two largest tax cuts ever in state history. I co-sponsored on both of them. Uh, so, uh, and uh, that that affects everyone in the state of yeah. Tennessee also. Uh, big deal. You know, uh, yeah. everybody wants their taxes cut. Everyone wants their taxes cut. Guys, y'all hear that? Tax cut, tax breaks. You get to keep more of your hard-earned money, which increases your quality of living. So pay attention to that. Now, um, Representative Raper, you are a registered uh, Republican, correct? I am. Yes, sir. Have you always been a Republican? I was. My mom and dad raised me as a Democrat, but okay. uh, I transitioned about, uh, oh, I don't know, about in college. And and the reason I did, and this isn't uh, saying nothing against Democrats, I've got some uh, really good friends that are Democrats, but um, I just felt like the Republican platform resonated and was in alignment more with my belief system. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So I love what you said when you said um, the that the platform of the Republican Party aligned more. It was your interest, and in, um, I, I I totally respect that. I pray that everyone that watches this respects that position. So what do you say for those people that say, "Well, I'm a Democrat." 
Um, I agree with Kevin Raper. I love what he's doing. I like the tax cut. I believe in education. I believe our teachers should uh, be protected. And but I'm a Democrat. But you're you're not just representing the Republicans of District 24, are you? You represent all the citizens of District 24. Absolutely. And and I look at it this way. Uh, I am asked that question a lot, and uh, that's a very good question posed by you. Uh, I tell them, I said, look at the overall picture and see if your belief system aligns with mine. If it doesn't, then vote for somebody else. I, I understand it. That's the American way. But look at the overall picture and see if I represent the value system that uh, that you believe in, and uh, and and I have served you well, and uh, then make a, a good informed decision. That's good. That's that's one thing. Um, uh, I think a lot of people, you know, our our party allegiance, um, our ideology, and our interests, and I we believe sometimes that you're 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 Kevin Raper, the husband, the father, the representative, but you. You represent the whole of District 24. So I, I would I would encourage people to be informed and like you heard the man, see if I've served you well and what I run on in the bills I passed doesn't behoove you. Fair enough. So what did you run on? You know, I, I got some politician friends and they have like these three P's or the four in, uh, E's. What did you run on first? What was your goal and your mission when you set out to run for your first term? Well, mine's very simple. Uh, I, I, you got to be careful as a potential legislator of making promises because you'll sometimes eat those words. Uh, because uh, in the House, we have to have 51 votes or it's not going to pass in the House. So you you have to get people on board you. So you, you better be careful making promises. But I made two big promises. One was I will not raise your taxes. Well, in fact, we had the two largest tax cuts, which I alluded to a moment ago. The, the second thing is, is I will always act with honesty, integrity, and fidelity. And my, and every one of my decisions, I pray over and, um, and everything is spiritually driven, uh, but also I'm going to listen to my constituents. And I stand after two years and I can say that I have accomplished both of those promises uh, to a T. Uh, I'm uh, still as loyal to my wife uh, on fidelity. I, I'm, I act with honesty and integrity. I will never mislead um, anyone from District 24 or anyone else, you know. And so, and and I like to think of myself as just a general person that is approachable at any time. I've always said when I get to the point of being a high, high and mighty person that goes to Nashville, I need to be gone. I, I want somebody to come up uh, at. Monterey restaurant where I eat a lot. I'm just yeah. using as an example. And I want somebody to come up and hug my neck and say, Hey, uh, uh, Kevin, it's good to see you. And you know what? I'm in my comfort zone because I love people and I love uh, sharing uh, my, uh, my spiritual faith with, with them. And, uh, and, and I think that uh, sometimes or a lot of times that, your uh, your actions speak louder than your words. So you're going to, uh, people are watching you and seeing if you're acting like a Christian and a man of Jesus. So, mm. Wow. Unapologetically, a uh, man that follows Jesus, um, love that you emphasize the honor and integrity of not only District 24, but all citizens and especially your wife, who you're in covenant with brother. I've seen you in the house. I've seen you, what y'all call it? The well. Um, if, um, I've seen it. It gets very entertaining up there in, in the Capitol. How do you navigate that water? Um, is there, um, it looks like from where I sit and when I tune in and when I get a time, it's like the Republican and the Democrats are not friends at all. It's is it not working together? They're working against. Is there any 
Um, of course, I you you guys are professionals. I believe you're you're respectful of one another. Is there any bipartisan bills taking place um, in the in the legislature? There, there are a lot of bipartisan bills, but you are right. Uh, there are a whole lot of partisanship going on on that House floor. But out of that, I, I'm just going to tell you, um, uh, my Democratic friends, uh, I love them just as much as uh, Republican friends. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm good friends. I go to Bible studies each week. We have two, and I go to those, and, and uh, there are lots of Democrats in there. So uh, I get to know them on a spiritual basis. And I have the utmost respect. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Going back to uh, talking about Jesus, you know, Jesus is my number one priority in life. Come you on. know, everything evolves around Jesus uh, Christ. I, I am an absolute Jesus lover. Uh, but uh, also, uh, I can tell you this. Jesus didn't see color. Come on. He, he didn't see uh, gender. Uh, he didn't see ethnicity. Uh, he saw you as somebody to love. And and that's what, what I tried to prescribe to. Wow. Wow. That's powerful right there. Brother, so I, if I had to guess, and somebody said, describe Representative Ray Brown, I said he, he, he's a man that loves Jesus, loves his wife, loves his boys, and he has a Tennessee Vols wedding band. Did I see that correctly? Yes, sir. There you go. <laughs> Listen, so brother, now we're gonna shift just for just how 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 do you keep your composure? It's been, I mean, it's been football uh purgatory up there in Knoxville. Like what? I mean, ninety eight. What was the late last great year? Like what? What is the Vols gonna do? How are you gonna turn around, brother? I know you're a praying man. Got to pray a little harder, representative. Uh, absolutely. Uh, 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 truthfully, I don't think uh, God cares whether uh, Tennessee or Alabama or Georgia wins. Uh, actually, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think that's a, a big uh, thing on his plate. That's more of, of us. But uh, the balls are turning it around. Uh, the athletic department right now is just absolutely thriving. We just came off a national championship in baseball. Okay. Um, the Lady Vols have gotten a new coach, and things are headed in a real positive direction. The the men Vols, the basketball Vols, are uh, right there at the top, uh, year in, year out with Coach Barnes. Uh, so it, it, it's just all the way around really – uh, taking shape. I think Danny White, the athletic director, is doing a fabulous job. And so uh, it, it's a process. You you can't uh, just turn things around overnight or all kinds of teams would do that. So uh, it's a process in the making, but I've been very proud of them lately and Coach Heupel, uh, the job he's done. Good deal, good deal. I don't know if I miss, didn't hear you. Did you bring up the football team? Yes. Okay. Uh, with okay. Coach Hopple, yes. Oh, okay. And uh, right. and and they have uh, they've been in the last few years. Um, I think uh, last year they were maybe um, ten and three, maybe something like that. Which um, uh, that's counting the bowl game. And uh, they won the Orange Bowl the year before against Clemson. And so uh, things are beginning to really head in the uh, the correct direction. That's good. I tell I tell um I live my life by that. Sometimes uh getting in the right direction, representative, is the first step. You you gotta you gotta, you know, uh you have to know where you're going before you can get there. So I, I love that analogy of like the right direction. But if you don't know where you're going, you don't even know how how to get which which direction to take. With with that being said. You are running uh, your house. Is that that's a two year term for those that don't know? And I'm asking these questions from a position of I know people are going to tune in that are heavy into the political world. Then I know some people that's probably like I don't I don't even vote local. So I want to speak to everyone. So if my if my question seems um, finite or I should have known, I'm asking from a place of how if you're reelected, how long do you serve? District 24? Two years at a time. Uh, basically speaking, the, the disadvantage of that is, is you're running every two years, so you're somewhat campaigning for two years. The moment 
uh, one of our local uh, senators uh, that uh, he's retired now, he, he called me the day after I won the, the first election, and he said, now, do uh, uh, you know when you start campaigning? And I said, no, when's that? And he said, tomorrow. And mm. uh, he said, you, you begin then, which is very true. It, it, you, it just never ends. We are senators in the state of Tennessee are on four-year terms, and they have a little bit more time. And then uh, if you go to a national level, senators are six years, which they have a lot more time. But still, even on the national level and the federal level, you, uh, the representatives are still two-year terms. And that, that goes back to the Constitution. So uh, I, I really wish it could change. But obviously, it doesn't sound like it's going to. Yes, uh, the Constitution right now, um, a quote unquote assault weapons ban and um, more gun control, what some would say, uh, people control. And I say assault weapons ban tongue in cheek because I understand and I, I know that there's never been assault weapon created. But for the the listeners, what is uh what is your stance? And if you don't want to share, as far as the Constitution and people's right to bear arms, do, um, are you for? I know people say we need more gun control. We need uh we need to ban weapons. And that's a hot topic right now, especially around re-election on the national level. I don't really hear too much of that on the local level, but on our national level, uh, we hear a lot about the Second Amendment. I am very much pro-Second Amendment. Uh, I, I, I truly believe that citizens have the right to bear arms, which uh, that's what the Second Amendment is about. Um, and one thing that is misleading that I hear a lot and uh, – and I, I want to just sort of clarify for uh, anyone listening is this. As it said, uh, uh, Representative Raper, we need to ban automatic weapons. Well, I want to clarify and say that automatic weapons were banned in 1937. And Pre so, so we have semi-automatic weapons. You have to pull the trigger every single time. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, they're not using them, uh, these weapons for um, for evil purposes. I, I, I'm not uh, saying that. And uh, as far as gun control, uh, I don't think that uh, there's a problem with gun control. I think that if somebody wanted 20 guns in their house, that, that may be their hobby, and they collect guns just like somebody else collect cars. And you got hunters out there, which I'm one of them, uh, that I love. And and I'm not going to bring a single shot gun to uh, a hunt uh, if possible. I'm going to bring um, one that's a semi-automatic rifle uh, if I'm like deer hunting or something like that. But uh, in the end, uh, we have looked at uh, increasing background checks and trying to identify mental illness because uh, folks from the beginning of time until the time that Christ returns to the earth, uh, we are going to have evil. And it seems like it's more prevalent now. I don't know why. I don't know if it's um, drugs. I don't know if it's alcohol, if it's uh, video games or a combination of all or society things. I, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. So. Yeah. It, it is. I love the education when you said that uh, assault weapons were banned. And I, I believe that's so germane and um, to to point out because they're semi automatics. And I think, again, people hear assault weapons and uh, uh, again, thinking that's what the AR stands for. And I, I believe and I, I thank you for clearing that up. Now, Representative, I have to ask you, it's another term going around that's a uh, 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 red flag laws. Like the red flag laws, do you believe that's infringing on one's Second Amendment right? Even though we are seeing um, a rise in like mental illness, and I love what you said that it seems that the Bible says it's going to wax colder and colder. So we are seeing inhumane. We're seeing evil. Some people say you can't legislate evil, so they want to say uh, let's do a red flag law. But some believe that red flag laws could infringe upon someone's Second Amendment right. Yeah, I do feel that way. I, I do think it's an infringement. Now, 
there, there we in the state of Tennessee, there has been one red flag law in effect for quite a while now, okay. and and it's uh, it gives latitude to judges uh, that when they see evidence that um, somebody you know. If you just pass any old red flag law, then uh, somebody could actually use that against you and say, hey, I saw them waving a gun. Our direction went, uh, that may not be true at all. And then, and then they come and throw the book at you and take your firearms, you know, which, which is absolutely against their constitutional rights. But, um, but the other side of that coin is, is we do have one in place that gives latitude Two judges, when they see that uh, we have a person with mental illness that is a potential danger uh, to society, and I, I, I say to everybody, if you see a person that is a potential danger to society, whether they are or not, you need to report it, folks. Uh, it, it's just like the recent um, uh, shooting uh, on President Trump that uh, got his ear. Well, um, there were people that identified that sniper on a roof and uh, they had a duty to go tell people what well, they did. And then the, some of the law enforcement uh, did not act on that. Well, mm -hmm. uh, they did their job, though. They reported uh, of somebody that might be uh, doing some kind of evil deed. So. Wow. So, uh, man, yeah. Uh, and no matter where you find yourself on which side of the bird, which side of the aisle, um, uh, former president of uh, 45th president, Donald J. Trump, the Republican nominee is still a human, still a father, still a, still a husband. And no one, um, has the right to take life because no one has the right to give it. So again, for people right there, and that's un American to say, I don't like what you said so I don't like what you, how you use your first amendment. So I'm gonna use my second to take your life. So I just want to put that out there as far as, uh, if that was uh, president Trump or any president or any human or American citizen. Like we don't want to live in a world like that. So I publicly say I am, I'm, I'm grateful that, uh, individual was a bad shot. Cause I don't think that would have been good for the nation or people or his family. Well, and I agree. And, and I'm going to take what you just said and, and say this, uh, folks, anybody out there should never be concerned about being shot. And then especially if somebody takes it in their own hands and delivers a shot, whether it, it connects or not, that, that that's not acceptable. That, that In the United States, we're better than that. And uh, I don't care if you're black, white, Asian. I don't care if you're male, female. Uh, whatever you are, you have a right to be in a, a safe environment and, uh, and not be scared. And, uh, and we have to, uh, as legislators, promote that. that. That is really my number one priority uh, as a legislator is the fact of keeping Tennesseans uh, safe and healthy and uh, and I'm worried about their welfare you know so that that is uh, always going to be on the top of my list wow i love what you just said representative raper united states america we're better than that 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 is so profound practical and profound we're better than that we're better than what we saw that uh as a country as a people we're better than that. i love that with that being said i have to get your opinion and your take on the southern border i think it's out of control um it, let me tell you anybody that comes into our country legally through the process uh, I applaud them for that. And we all are, well, unless you're a Native American, um, uh, then we all are immigrants in one way or another uh, nice. through our ancestry. Nice. And so that's what America is. It's a plethora of, of different ethnicities. Well, but right now, we have people that are just taking advantage of the situation. And, and, and 
I understand that they're in a bad situation, but also within uh, that same vein, we have drug lords, terrorists, and it's even been noted that uh, we have people from China and Russia and Afghanistan and different people that are coming across the southern border. So it's out of control. We've got to find ways to uh, secure our border uh, where people come across legally and through the correct processes. Wow. Okay. Good deal. Good response. Um, and I, I love what you, what you said, if you're not native, we all migrated one way or another. And, but there, there's still a process and that process protects people, protects, uh, everyone. And like you said, we have a, people have a right. So thank you. And not only the Southern border, cause I know that's somewhat of a, um, a hot talking point, the Northern border as well, borders as a whole, you know, the Northern border as well. So, um, every country has a border. Every country should put their best foot forward in protecting that border and a uh, great response. Uh, uh, representative Raper seem like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, I enjoy doing this. It, 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 when when you made the offer, I was like, "Boy, this is great!" Uh, I, right. Uh, I'm right down my alley, especially when you said uh, uh, we would get to talk spiritually. Anytime I can talk uh, uh, about Jesus, I am in my comfort zone. So wow, wow, good deal. Uh, yeah, you're a man of faith. You're a man of faith, and I I I believe. Um, um, I actually wrote on this shameless plug, guys, if you want to go pick up a copy of my book, Critical Faith Theory, Developing a Biblical Worldview. I talk about that in the book where um, Jesus calls us to occupy. And I believe sometimes men of faith all believe we're supposed to go on and be pastors and deacons and go in the church, which we can. But I believe a lot of us are called um to govern, to legislate, to coach football teams, to have local businesses. Um, I believe we're called to occupy, not be to occupy and not be occupied. So with that being said, uh, Representative Raper, um, you being a man of faith, speak to us. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, pro-life versus pro-choice, what are you for the listeners, for the ones that's viewing, for the ones that want to know Kevin Raper, where do you stand on abortion? I am uh, completely pro-life. And, and I mean, uh, uh, now, uh, do I think there's some exceptions? You know, when a woman's life is in danger, uh, I don't expect, I don't think that uh, a law should dictate uh, whether uh, a woman lose her life or not, I think that there always should be a self-defense mechanism. But, okay. uh, but basically speaking, I am pro-life uh, all the way through. And uh, uh, I, it, and to give you an example of a positive, and I, I, this was a statistic that I heard about two to three months ago. So it's probably changed since then. But uh, since we enacted. Uh, the trigger law, uh, and then it, it developed into another bill in Nashville. In Tennessee, 9,000 babies have been saved. You know, wow. So, uh, wow. Wow. And there are people out there begging for uh, uh, babies right now, uh, begging to adopt them. And, uh, and so my thing now is now that this is in place, Support the mothers and babies every way we possibly can. Even with mental health with mama, uh, mamas. Uh, uh, we, we passed a law this year about uh, giving free diapers. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there are just uh, numbers of ways that we can support them all the way through because it is a, a, a tough thing that we are asking them. And just because we enacted a law doesn't mean, well, okay, now it's in place, so good luck. Well, yeah, and then we also have a number of kids that we need to place, so we need to reduce the amount of time and that adoption process to make sure that we get them in a proper home as quickly as possible. Man, wow, that's that's. That's so good. I have to ask this question. I know friends personally that have adopted multiple children. I, I won't put a, the number out there publicly, but I know it's very expensive. 
it's a process of a lot of paperwork and representative i've always been torn because i know people that uh have kids placed in their home for a couple months and they actually sometimes receive money to let those kids stay over like have an extended stay for a couple months and they move kids around why is it that if you just uh play if you just let a kid live with you for two to three months you could get you could receive a check but if you want to adopt a kid and make them legally a part of your family you have to pay I, I, that you can just enlighten me on that and sorry listeners that was a that's a personal question of mine uh i'm gonna give you as truthful answers i can uh i agree totally with you but i don't know the answer to that and that is one that has been a big uh thing of mine to try to figure out how we can turn this thing around uh, I don't mind uh, uh, paying for somebody to adopt a child Same. temporarily. That, that doesn't bother me at all. But but also, when you're permanently uh, providing homes for them, it, number one, it shouldn't cost you anything other than living expenses, of course, and the normal processes of being a parent. But it shouldn't cost you anything. You should be rewarded for that. Uh, so uh, I, I am on page uh, with you a hundred percent with that. Yes, that that's the that uh and, and again, like you said, I'm so glad you cleared that up because some people are called to be a buffer. Uh, a child could be in danger and just need a safe place to land until a caseworker get them somewhere permanently. So I'm all for supporting those families that says we're called to be um a place of uh, safety while you find a permanent place support those families but then support those families say we want to give this child our last name we want to raise them with our values we want them to be a part of our family and i um i know personally again before people throw digital fruit at me this is not me make an assumption i've walked this process when i seen a family that has a young man or woman living with them they get assistance i've seen a family have to go through a different country raise crazy amounts of money to give that child their last name give them a loving family and i said again i'm gonna borrow this from you representative raper we're better than that we're better than that so with that being said uh the border crisis we spoke on that um fit now um i know i believe i'm personally up to knowing 11 people that i know of with the school with knew of not read about that has lost their life due to fit now overdose again uh from all they, they were all um no matter the ethnicity caucasian american african american they were americans they were human beings made in the image but they have lost their life due to drug overdose how can we combat it? I know we are as, as, as a country, as a state, as a local community. What can we do more to stop the flow of kids, especially, uh, but people dying over fentanyl, which seems to be running rapid? Well, yeah, we are just in the process of trying to find every way possible to stem this off. This is an epidemic that is killing our people. I'm sorry, I just got a phone call, but uh, that's, that's fine. okay. Fine. Um, but this uh, this absolutely is uh, uh, not problematic. It's scary where where this is going. Now we need to find some of the root causes, and uh, I have heard different things. And I'm not throwing this under the bus, but I've heard root causes like. Um, from the beginning on, uh, kids are violent and, and experimenting with drugs cause of video games and so on. Well, I, I don't know that. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, uh, it, it could be uh, part of the reason, but I would say there are multiple mm -hmm. reasons. And so we have got to find the root causes and then try to solve the, uh, the problem. Uh, if if you're trying to put a band-aid on everything, you're never really getting uh, to the root of the problem. So, mm, 
That's that's so good. And I you're a busy man. You've been graced with your time. This is my uh last question, guys. This is Kevin uh representative Kevin Raper on the Quantel Lindsay podcast. And this has been amazing. I he um one of the best answers you gave, Representative, for me, my favorite personal one when you honestly said, I don't know. I think the 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 you just to me, you just stood six, seven, six feet. Six feet nine. You stood so tall because I believe we go forward as leaders and representatives and who people when we say, you know, I don't know. Instead of trying to, I think that's what creates clickbait when our leaders get up trying to have an answer for everything. When the simple one is, there's no. That's actually brilliant to say, no, I don't know because I told my wife yesterday. I live my life like this, a uh, representative. I'd rather have no information about something than bad information about something or incorrect information about something. And if I don't know, I can still find out. That's not the end of it. So that was one of the highlights for me. I'm pretty sure the viewers have so many more. But you've 34 years in education. Your wife is still in education. I I cannot let you get out of here without asking you about school choice. Um, I am all about school choice. I, I really... Um, uh, think that parents should have options. Now, uh, this last year, our governor tried to tie in school choice with the voucher bill. Well, they're totally separate ideas. And uh, I did not support the voucher bill at the time. And here's the reason why. There wasn't an accountability. And you look at all the other states that have... employed or uh, enacted the voucher bill and what what has happened is this they all have gone into the red uh, or near the red uh, because they don't have an answer for it and so you've got to find parameters and not just everything be open-ended we can't bankrupt the state and we we cannot go in our rainy day fund uh, just because we're adding more people and more people and more people uh, to a voucher system. So we have to find ways uh, to do this uh, in a proper manner where there are good accountabilities there. And and I don't know exactly uh, what all the language should be. Um, but I am on. Uh, I am a vice chair of one of the education committees, and I work with this all the time. But uh, rest assure you, I am for school choice. Uh, I just think that parents need options, and that that brings me to mind uh, one of the bills we ran this uh, was the fact of if you have a child that. Uh, Representative, it, uh, you you cut out. You said the bill you ran, and I believe you received a call. And I just okay. wanted you to – I didn't want anyone to misinterpret your position. Sure. Um, I, I sponsored a bill, and it did pass, uh, that uh, when you have uh, a child in kindergarten, first or second grade, and if they uh, have a, a, a physical or emotional disability – Uh, and the parents think that uh, the child should be held back a year, but the school does not, the parents get the choice on that. So they can override the school board's decision on that. Uh, And so that's another means of trying to give parents choices. And uh, and, and I want to give, I want to pass government down to where locals have more authority. Uh, the state uh, doesn't necessarily know what is best for Bradley County and Cleveland area. And uh, so uh, the Cleveland and Bradley County need to be making more decisions for themselves than the state does. So. Wow. Did, uh, did that bill uh, that you were part of pass where the parents could say, I want him or her held back. Is that a thing? Because I asked that because I know firsthand a few young men and women would have benefited greatly with you being in office fighting for that about 10 years ago uh well i I am just extremely proud that it passed and uh and i think it's going to make a a vast difference uh for the future uh of those type of children and so anyway uh i just i just think it's great good deal guys uh 
Rep- Representative, thank you again. Um, we pray for you. Wish you nothing but the best on your campaign and your road to reelection. Guys, we have a man, a uh, man of God, uh, pro Jesus, pro marriage, pro family, pro to a pro everybody, a representative, a Republican um, representative, Kevin Raper going running for reelection of district 2024. Before I let you go, is it a trick question or you can answer it. You want to speak on who you're endorsing for the presidential? Uh, President Trump. Okay. Uh, but, but um, I won't go into all the details, but uh, President Trump, uh, I'm endorsing. So good deal. You heard it right there, guys. Hey, listen, go out, get involved. Representative Raper, where can they support? Where can they donate? How how can people put a get a sign? I listen, whoever's on your sign team, they've done an amazing job. You can't drive without seeing your sign. So how can people get involved? How can they donate? How can they support your uh, your campaign? I have uh, two Facebook sites. One is Representative Kevin Raper. Uh, and uh, and you you don't do, go in. And I accept you like a normal Facebook. That that you just follow me. Okay. And then the, I have my personal one, which I invite anybody uh, wants to learn more about it because I send out each week during when we're in session legislative updates of important bills coming up, what we did this week, um, uh, the, my bills, and so on. So I want uh, I want the people. Uh, of Cleveland to think that um, that Nashville is a click away instead of three hours away. So wow! And uh, and the, the, if they want to donate to my campaign, there are areas to guide you on there. If you want to sign, private message me, and I'll hand deliver it to you. Wow! You know, so, so anyway, uh, that uh, maybe that answered your question. It definitely did, sir. Hey, I'm going to let you get out of here. Guys, it's been an amazing conversation. Representative Kevin Raper on the Quantel Lindsay podcast. I can't thank you enough. Listen, you guys, get involved. Go make your voices be heard. Support those candidates who... Uh, you align with who serve your interests um stay uh get involved serve let's make our community better we're gonna end with what representative raper said we're better than that i love that that was a good one sir thank you guys so much till next time this is quantel Lindsay podcast thank you